So, Prime Minister, you're the first one up. You've had an eventful year. Bet you that India trip doesn't really sound that bad anymore, does it? Not so bad, eh? No. You keep saying that you want to help the middle class. But if you keep screwing up so much, you're going to end up joining the middle class. A little bit. Yeah. C'est quand même un bel exploit que vous avez réussi cette année. Il y a la moitié du pays qui est fâché à cause d'une taxe carbone. L'autre moitié est fâchée parce que vous avez acheté un pipeline. L'Alberta est en crise. Le Québec est en crise. Finalement, tel père, tel fils, hein? Honestly, though, honestly, we've got faith in you. Yeah. We're sure you're going to have an amazing campaign. Sure. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Please welcome to the stage the Honorable Justin Trudeau. Every day I'm sh sh shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. Shuffling, shuffling. Bonsoir tout le monde. I am so pleased to be here on this May the 4th, surrounded by my colleagues from both sides of the aisle to celebrate the people who write op-eds for Katie and are trying to figure out how to refer to Jerry other than a senior government source. And I think you'll all agree the food tonight was pretty great, but I was hoping for sushi. I love Chinese food. Before we begin, I need to recognize the Parliamentary Press Gallery's sponsors who made tonight possible and who contribute significantly to the hard work you all do. Our bronze level sponsor is once again the Aga Khan Foundation. At the silver level, we've got the Government of India. And finally, this year's Press Gallery Dinner's gold sponsor is none other than SNC-Lavalin. Thank you all for your donations. Thank you for your donations. Security will see you out. Now, this is my fourth time attending this event as Prime Minister. I always think of Star Wars Episode Four as the one where things really start to take off for the Alliance. But I'm learning the hard way that it's just not that simple. For starters, I've got an army of clones coming after me. Actually, I think the leader of the Conservative Empire is here tonight. Yeah, no, not, not you, Jason, not yet. Doug Ford, Max, nope, you got to show up if you want to play. Good to see you, Andrew. I must say, I wasn't sure you'd make it. Knowing that Rebel Media isn't part of the press gallery, I was afraid you wouldn't score an invite. But good on you. I've actually been meaning to ask for your help with Bill Morneau. Ever since Bill outmaneuvered you on House procedure with his budget tabling, he's been so immensely full of himself. Come on, Andrew. You were the speaker for crying out loud, and he's just a wookie, uh, sorry, a rookie. Do better. As a rule, you know that conservative leaders tend to be quite predictable. When someone's so set on turning back the clock, they tend to lose the element of surprise. But not this year. Andrew Scheer expressed support for the Brexit movement. Now, that's a bold strategy, bound to steal voters away from the bloc. After all, 
There's nothing separatists like more than razor-thin referendums, never-ending negotiations, and the British. <laughs> Jason Kenney finally met a pipeline owner he hates. This guy. <laughs> And against the odds, Doug Ford and I found a way to work together. After all, now that weed is legal, Ontario really is a place to grow. <laughs> Heureusement, on peut toujours compter sur le chef de l'impopulaire Parti populaire du Canada pour nous donner l'heure juste. Dites ce que vous voulez sur Maxime Bernier, mais faut lui donner du crédit lorsque du crédit est dû. Max. C'est un homme de principe. Que ce soit en envoyant l'aide humanitaire lorsqu'il était ministre, en encourageant son ancien gouvernement à investir dans Bombardier ou en appuyant la gestion de l'offre, il tient parole. But while I'm busy fending off attacks from the clones, others seem to live on an entirely different planet. We've got Liz May, who, come to think of it, is kind of Parliament Hill's Yoda. <laughs> you don't always understand what she's saying, but you're pretty sure there's quite a bit of wisdom in there. <laughs> Plus, she's green. <laughs> Jigmeet. Jigmeet has been busy searching the galaxy for 337 people who actually want to run for him. Though I'm, I'm glad he made it finally to the House of Commons. Now that he's living closer to work, he doesn't have to put his bike in the trunk of his BMW. Now that's a plan to reduce emissions. <laughs> sur la colline, à bien des égards, on s'entend pas sur tout. Maxime croit que la terre manque de CO2. Andrew pense que le Brexit a l'air cool. Moi, je suis sûr que notre caucus est plus uni que jamais. Mais sur la loi sur la laïcité, on est tous d'accord. Le projet de loi 21 n'a pas sa place chez nous. Ah, C'est vrai. Presque tous d'accord. Comme bien des Québécois, j'ai aussi tendance à oublier le bloc. D'ailleurs, on a-tu oublié d'inviter Yves-François Blanchet ce soir? En tout cas, s'il n'aime pas mes jokes... Euh... Je l'inviterai à porter plainte à l'Ombudsman de Radio-Canada. Attention, par contre, tout comme Guy Lepage, lui aussi il travaille directement pour moi. As the Parle Wars rage on, it can be hard to keep track of everything that's been happening. But luckily, Canadians can count on a dedicated team of reporters to bring them the same news every night for two months. Now, I was hoping my appearance on The Simpsons last week would help change the channel, but turns out their ratings have gone down too. I must say, though, I am disappointed to see that Andrew Coyne couldn't make it tonight. Apparently, he was worried that if he came, he wouldn't meet his daily quota of 21 hours on the social media vomitorium. Other members of the press have chosen to distance themselves from the black hole that is Twitter, so they could focus on the lucrative side hustle of book writing instead. Actually, it was Paul Wells who wanted to write a book about our government in its earlier, better days. We had to turn down his request, though, but that's only because we didn't like the title. Justin Trudeau, The Paul Wells Story. <laughs> now, you sometimes hear about liberal bias in the media these days, how they're constantly letting off our government, letting our government off the hook for no good reason. Frankly, I think that's insulting. It's clear that they let us off the hook for a very good reason, because we paid them $600 million. You don't get stellar headlines like these without greasing the wheels a bit. Yeah. Du côté des médias francophones, il y a eu pas mal de changements cette année. Emmanuel Latraverse joute maintenant sur TVA, six jours sur sept. 
un vrai bourreau de travail. Merci. Mélanie Marquis est passée de la presse canadienne à la presse du cours. Mylène Crête a quitté la presse canadienne pour le devoir. Catherine Lévesque est partie de HuffPo pour rejoindre la presse canadienne. Un gros jeu de chaises musicales. Heureusement, je peux compter sur Philippe Vincent, qui est ma date pour la deuxième année consécutive. Je ne me suis jamais senti aussi proche de TVA. <rires> Parlant du président de la tribune de la presse, comment oublier le chaos quotidien du nouvel édifice de l'Ouest? Il n'y a pas beaucoup de place pour scrummer, donc les médias s'empilent devant mon bureau et les députés répondent à des questions de dos. Mais ce n'est pas la faute de PV, c'est l'empereur Harper qui, évidemment, avait la liberté de la, de la presse à cœur lorsqu'il a approuvé les plans. Mais je pense que ça a backfired, parce que chaque fois que je prends Katie Simpson's questions, je me sens comme Jared Kushner en face de USTR. Il n'y a pas d'escape. No sachet away. <laughs> NAFTA was one of the big battles, the, was only one of the big battles the Alliance waged this year. Fighting climate deniers is a full time job. When the Flat Earth Society met up at the gas pump a few weeks ago, what confused me most wasn't why they wanted to give big polluters. Uh, break. It was why they landed on spamming people's phones as the way to get their message out. Andrew, unsolicited texts are never welcome. Just ask Tony Clement. <laughs> And then there's SNC Lavalin. I've got a bad feeling about this. I was actually told that it would be inappropriate for me to comment on ongoing court cases that don't involve Doug Ford, but screw it. I'll just blame Scott Bryson later. Drink, drink. Now, SNC-Lavalin is perhaps the most Canadian scandal there ever was, and I'm including that chocolate bar. Most people agree that no laws were broken, but we're going to keep talking about it because We promise to keep Canadian journalism alive. <laughs> I guess for me, the silver lining is that you guys forgot about all those other times we shot ourselves in the foot. Huh? Oh, yeah, there's more. <laughs> for you guys in the corners, it's all India. Ah, the good old days. <laughs> Granted, 2019 so far has been more thunderstorm watch than sunny ways, but we're doing everything we can to make sure that the empire does not strike back in these pearl wars. We're liberals, so we launched consultations and met with experts. <laughs> Astronauts? Astronauts. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> We're also building an incredible team of Jedi. You already know of some of them and their mind tricks. We've got Ralph Goodale of Regina Monologue fame. <laughs> Catherine McKenna, who I don't know if you've heard, thinks that pollution cannot be free. <laughs> and Marco Mendicino who goes on TV panels every single night to remind you that these are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> If that's not hope and hard work, I don't know what is. But I'll stop here, because you can read about the rest of the team in the Globe and Mail, which recently launched its own version of Hill Climbers. <laughs> Mes chers amis, je veux terminer en vous remerciant sincèrement pour le travail incroyable que vous faites. En plus d'endurer toute la classe politique à la longue, longueur de journée, vous allez au fond des choses et vous faites des sacrifices énormes pour fournir un service essentiel. Tous les jours, les Canadiens savent qu'ils peuvent compter sur vous, non seulement pour les nouvelles du jour, mais pour mieux comprendre le monde dans lequel on vit. Grâce à vous, nos décisions sont mieux informées. Nos gouvernements, y compris le mien, sont tenus responsables 
et les citoyens possèdent des avenues pour faire entendre leur voix. As we stand here tonight and celebrate the freedom of our press, we can't forget the journalists around the world who are jailed, persecuted, or killed simply for doing their job. The killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi last fall was a painful reminder of the need to protect journalists and their essential work around the world. But we also need to be vigilant here at home. We live in a time when people are losing trust in their institutions, and the news is no exception. We're witnessing dangerous trends, not just online, but in our communities as well. It is the job of every single person in this room, members of the press, politicians, staff, to uphold and renew that trust. And when I look around me tonight, I'm glad to see so many good people taking up that work. So thank you for all that you do for this country and its people. I can't wait to hit the campaign trail with all of you this fall, except maybe you, David Aiken. <laughs> Have a great evening, my friends. And of course, may the 4th be with you. Oh!